Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, it's great to virtually see all of you. I wish all of us can be together in person, but it is what it is these days. I hope you have enjoyed this setup as well. And big thanks to the entire Stream Native and Splunk teams for putting a lot of time and efforts into making this a great, a good experience. Today, uh, Mathieu and me will talk about what we observe on helping Pulsar community adopting Pulsar and why unified messaging in streaming is the future for emotion data. Uh, before diving into the topic, uh, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, I'll get started. Uh, my name is CJ Guo. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Stream Native. And I'm also one of the PMC member of Pulsar and Bookkeeper. I've been working on these two projects uh, almost since day one and have been helping a lot of Pulsar users adopting Pulsar to solve their business problems. Prior to Streamlio, uh, Stream Native, I was one of the co-founders of Streamlio. Prior to Streamlio, I led the messaging team at Twitter, where I run one of the largest bookkeeper clusters in the world. Now I'm handing over to Matteo so he can introduce himself. Matteo. Hi everyone, I'm Matteo. Um, I, I was one of the co-creators co of Apache Pulsar and uh, when, when I was at Yahoo and I've been working with Pulsar since then. And I'm the CTO at Stream Native and like CG, I was one of the, uh, of the co founder of, of Streamio two years ago. Okay. Uh, thank you, Matteo. Uh, for people who attend uh, Pulsar Summit the first time, uh, Matteo and I are from Stream Native. Uh, Stream Native is the company behind uh, founded by the uh, co-creators of Pulsar, and we provide a cloud native unified messaging and streaming platform powered by Pulsar. Uh, we offer two products. The first product is Stream Native Cloud, a fully managed enterprise SaaS offering of Pulsar. And the second product is Stream Native Platform, which I will talk a bit later. And both products is designed for supporting multi-cloud and hybrid cloud strategy. So uh, as you probably already know, earlier this week, we have released Apache Pulsar 2.8. Uh, it's a big milestone for us as we are heading towards a complete vision for a unified messaging and streaming platform. Today, we are excited to announce the first release of Stream Native Platform. It is a self-managed enterprise software offering of Pulsar. It bundles uh, 2.8 uh, to enable Pulsar trans transaction. And besides the core Pulsar, it also includes the GA release of Kafka on Pulsar to provide full Kafka protocol ca uh, compatibility, a function mesh component, which is a an, an community extension of Pulsar functions for service streaming, and additional enterprise grade uh, security features like OAuth to support and structured audit lock, and a set of Pulsar operators to manage and run Pulsar clusters on Kubernetes. So the entire Stream Native platform delivers a seamless experience as what you can get from Stream Native Cloud. It's now available for you to try it out. And uh, as you might have uh, noticed, I talked uh, about unified messaging and streaming multiple times, but what does it really mean? Uh, before diving into it, uh, let's take a look at the trends in the post community. So, the Pulsar PMC sent out a Pulsar user survey last year, and we have collected more than 260 survey submissions. Earlier this week, we have released a full user survey report. Uh, you can visit our website to get a full uh, report. Based on the survey result, we want to highlight four trends in the Pulsar community. Scale, Cloud Native, Pulsar Plus Flink, and the movement from uh, Kafka to Pulsar. So uh, let's get started with scale. We have seen more companies are using Pulsar in production. The percentage has increased from 31% to 51%. We also seen an increase in number of uh, large scale enterprise deployments. More than 12% of the users share that their organization process more than one trillion messages per day using Pulsar. Tencent, Splunk, Kingsoft Cloud, Newland are just a handful of the companies who are using Pulsar to process at that scale. The second trend is Cloud Native. Uh, the adoption of Pulsar is being driven by a large industry move to the cloud in Kubernetes. 
As part of this move, organizations are looking into technologies that are run in, in the cloud, scale well, and can leverage and run well on top Kubernetes. As you can see from the survey, 80% uh, of Pulsar users deploy Pulsar in the cloud environment. 62% of Pulsar users deploy Pulsar on Kubernetes. 49% of users choose Pulsar because Pulsar's cloud native capabilities. So technologies with single tenant system, uh, monolithic architecture, and that lack geo replication in multi-cloud capabilities that are not able to meet the needs of modern data applications. As a result, companies are increasing looking into adopting cloud native technologies like Pulsar to meet their business needs. The move to the Kubernetes is now a simple lift and shift. The transition requires new development models, new ways of thinking, and that is causing companies to reiterate the, how existing technology will, will be deployed and managed in cloud. And that has been one of the major uh, driving factors of Pulsar adoption. And the third trend is Pulsar and Flink uh, integration. The adoption of Pulsar is often driven by companies seeking the ability to achieve new use cases. The Pulsar in Flink integration is one of the example. Uh, as you can see here, from 2020 to 2021, the number of Pulsar in Flink usage almost doubled. I'm not going to dive into details of Pulsar in Flink, as my coworker Edison and Tio from Vavorica, they would, they would uh, give a keynote presentation about advanced streaming processing with Flink in Pulsar. Uh, you should hear their insight on this. The last trend uh, is Kafka users adopt Pulsar. So uh, when something new is happened, there's a reductive view of that thing and an expensive view. So the reductive view is, well, there's nothing much has changed. The expensive view is what if this is true in a large and what would be new in different. The reductive view of Pulsar is just another master queue. It's just another data pipeline. We have so many master queues in, in the past. Now it's just more scalable and there's nothing really fundamental, fundamentally different. Hence people usually see Pulsar is a re, just a simple replacement of Kafka or sometimes people call it Kafka plus plus. Obviously this is wrong. Pulsar's adoption don't always start with a Kafka uh, replacement. Instead, Pulsar and Kafka serve very different use cases. Kafka was built for support uh, was built to support data pipelines and data movement to centralized location. Pulsar, by contrast, was created for serving mission critical applications, which require more flexible consumption model. So people usually get started by adopting Pulsar for mission critical applications or new use cases. Once adopted, Pulsar usage expands across organizations. That is aligned with what we have learned uh, from the survey. 68% of Pulsar users also run Kafka. 34% uh, of users use or plan to expand their Pulsar usage to serve existing Kafka applications by using uh, Kafka on Pulsar. So now let's, let's take a look at uh, some uh, Pulsar adoption stories from the past 12 months. A key Kafka to Pulsar adoption story comes from Splunk, a company that used Kafka in production uh, for years, but they recently has adopted Pulsar to replace Kafka in its DSP product. Uh, one of its largest deployment is processing 10 petabytes data per day. And Kasek from Splunk will give uh, share more details in his keynote uh, presentation today. Tencent adopt Pulsar for building its building platform. Uh, once Pulsar is proved to solve mission critical applications, uh, the adoption just spread across multiple business units within Tencent. There are a few breakout sessions from Tencent. If you are interested in learning about their adoption uh, story, please check them out. Uh, Iterable is another Pulsar adoption uh, story that expand uh, from its original usage to a more broader usage. Uh, it Rebel first adopt Pulsar to replace GrabMQ that was used for powering its core business services. 
now they are in the process of expanding use cases to build uh, data, data services. They are also presenting in the summit. Please don't miss their talk. So the movement uh, from Pulse Kafka to Pulsa is not simply just mean Pulsa is a better technology, next generation of technology, but it also means the rise of the data needs for unified messaging in streaming. People are looking into one platform that is able to support all kinds of emotion data. To support this trend better, uh, we need to kind of rewind back to the early days of Pulsa. So back to uh, 2012, uh, when we first set out to build Pulsar, we thought there should be a global geolocate infrastructure for our messaging data. So we didn't start with the idea of making our own software, but we start by observing the gaps in the existing technologies available at that time and realize how they were, they were insufficient to serve the needs of a data-driven organization. So what does that mean? So there are two different types of uh, emotion data. One is messaging and the other one is streaming. So messaging systems uh, usually deal with commands that represent changes that need to be made to a system. An example is that we send messages that says uh, process this order or change user to be delete, but we don't actually perform that change and just send the notification to trigger other service to make the uh, perform the change. Messaging services are usually select when um, synchronized communication needs to be broken down into smaller microservices. In contrast, streaming systems deal with events. Uh, the state changes themselves. Uh, so instead of sending a message saying uh, the, this user wants to update their email, so instead would actually perform the updates. And events within a streaming system into the link together that may be persist, replay and aggregate for building uh, data services. So in messaging demand and streaming demand, you probably already know a lot of uh, popular systems like WebMQ, SQS, Kafka, Kinesis for building out uh, the, uh, the services. Now you have two different types of systems. You have to make a tough choice to pick one or just adopt all the different uh, technologies to, to build a complicated infrastructure. So the complexity of such infrastructure result in data segregate into two complete silos. One silo is using uh, messaging queues for building application services. And the other silo is using streaming system for building data services. And still you need additional integration connectors to combine the data together or moving data from one domain to the other domain. To provide a more concrete example, let's use uh, e-coms as example. So this diagram shows how e-coms would, uh, the e-coms infrastructure would look like uh, when using existing uh, technologies. On the application side, you will be using a messaging queue system like WebMQ for connecting different microservice services together. And on the data, data services side, you will be using uh, like Kafka and uh, together with a uh, stream processing engine like Fling to process all the data ingest into Kafka. And Kafka also serve the purpose of uh, writing the data to your data warehouse for more for the batch processing. And obviously, as you can see here, the data has been stored in two different uh, complete segregate uh, data domain and using different technologies. And you have to build teams that is able to operate uh, these two different systems and the complexity would increase as you are onboarding more and more data services and application services on those systems. So this leads into one question why not just have one uh, system that is able to support both messaging and streaming? And because it's a very nature to merge messaging and streaming together, the problem we are solving here is to have one infrastructure that is able to handle data flowing from your business application to your data services. Pulsar provides uh, such technologies to support both. And here's a diagram 
of how PULSA can be used in e comms industry and reduce the entire complexity of your infrastructure. And what you get from this infrastructure is unified storage and transport of messages in streams. And tier storage is also key to POSA because that means you don't need additional uh, tools in order to write the data from your streaming system to your data lake. And application and data domain use one uh, single system to exchange data with converged messaging and streaming. And you can have one and more teams to share a single tool set to dealing with streaming data. So at this point, you probably have known why POSA is built for unified messaging and streaming, but how we build it and what is the future for it. I'm going to hand over to Mathieu and he could walk you through the details. Thank you, CG. And let's take a re retrospective look at how Pulsar has evolved through the years. When we started designing Pulsar as a new platform, we always had this idea of supporting both the PubSub semantics as well as the data streaming pipelines, which at the time were a very new and emerging thing. But it would be a lie to say that we had everything pre-planned since, since the beginning. Instead, we spent a lot of time observing how people use these platforms, and we tried to fill all the gaps we were seeing, evolving persons with the changing needs of data applications. The first step, at the very core of Pulsar, there has always been the concept of log, a distributed, replicated, and immutable ledger where all the events are appended. And the Bookkeeper has proved throughout the years to be the best storage solution for streams of data. It scales to a very large number of logs. It offers consistency, durability, low latency, and high throughput, but more importantly, very convenient operational tooling. To summarize, Using the log as the building block does a lot of the heavy lifting required to build a truly scalable system. Another architectural choice that came naturally from using Bookkeeper has been the separation of the storage from a data serving layer. This again comes from Bookkeeper because Bookkeeper requires to have a single writer for each log. In our case, the broker acts as that single writer. This multi-layer architecture was exactly what we needed because it allows Porsa to have stateless brokers. So that means that topics can be easily moved across brokers without copying any data. For, for example, expanding cluster or adjusting the topic assignments after change conditions in traffic. And uh, the, the absence of data locality because of this broker layer, the data for a single topic or, or partition does not have to be stored into one single storage nodes. Instead, we are going to segment it, and we, we that way we can fully utilize the resources of the entire cluster. And we, we just say that the log is the building block of Pulsar, and this is true, but the log on its own, it's a very low level construct. Um, the applications are very often need much more sophisticated ways to interact with the data than just running through the log of events. In, instead, we, we wanted to capture the right level of semantics needed to support a wide range of pub sub and streaming use cases. So the core idea was to leave the flexibility to consume data from topics into multiple different ways, depending on what the application needs. And with this, we ended up having four sub subscription type with different semantics and different properties, each one with its own merits from um, exclusive, failover, key shared, and share. And after the PubSub API, the next addition was the reader API. You can think of it as the unmanaged way to consume data from a topic. And while there are many reasons for using a reader, the main users are typically stream processing frameworks because they tend to have their own checkpointing mechanism or in a very similar way, batch systems because they want to do a scan of the historical data. And if you look at the common theme here, the common theme in the API it is exposed by Pulsar is the support for schema. Having direct support for schema inside Pulsar means that the brokers can validate the scheme of the data being published, and also that we can 
validate the expectation of the consumers so that consumers know what type of data are consuming. And it, but it, it also means that um, it becomes very easy to, to discover the schema of the data. And this discoverability of the schema means that you can write fully type safe generic consumers that don't need to be aware of one specific schema. And next, we look at what people were trying to do with messaging platform. And there, the, the re realization was that there is always some portion of computation involved. Um, application very often need to do simple data transformations, enrichment, and similar tasks. So functions were designed to, pro to provide the simplicity of the serverless model, but with a very tight integration in the personal platform itself. And one example of how powerful the personal function framework is, is that we have created a connector framework, Pulsar IO, that is entirely based on the Pulsar function runtime. Um, and with Pulsar IO, you can choose between a large set of pre-built connectors uh, for many different systems, both sources or sinks of data, or you can build your own custom connectors. After the functions and IO, the next step was that we saw a trend that more and more users wanted to use the stream concept, not just as a temporary buffer of data, but or as a way to isolate data ingestion and processing, but instead they increasingly wanted to keep the stream as a permanent or a, at, a, at, at least long-term uh, storage of record. So tier storage here was the missing link to enable it. Uh, by uploading the cold data to the cloud storage providers, we can have large scale data retention at a very effective cost, all while maintaining the stream view of the data and the same API to consume it. Another realization um, was that because of its very nature, messaging, it is always at the integration point between different application and components. So that is great, but it makes the migration from other platform into Pulsar a bit harder. So you always have to coordinate this migration across different teams and organization. So to make it easier, we extended the Pulsar broker to be able to speak several protocols in addition to the Pulsar native protocol. With protocol handlers, there is a pluggable way to add more ways to interact with the Pulsar service and the same topic data. We started with KOP, Kafka on Pulsar, and then followed up with AMQP and MQTT. This is a very powerful mechanism for a few reasons. Uh, first, ap application can use existing client libraries with no code or de dependency changes. Um, second, you can mix all sorts of different protocols and interact with the same topic. So you can use a Porsche producer and a Kafka consumer, or um, a RabbitMQ, RabbitMQ producer and a Porsche consumer, and it, the data is the same. So it is exposed directly by Porsche brokers. The data is stored only once, and there is no proxy over overhead because it's happening in the brokers. And to really complete the full, the full picture here, in Porsche 2.8, we have introduced the support for transactions. So it is now possible to do very complex interaction and take advantage of the transactional properties. For example, publishing messages atomically across multiple topics or consuming and producing atomically. We can say that for Saturday, day, it is a big milestone in the journey of completing this vision of unified messaging and streaming platform. And we are very excited and very proud of this release. And this is the culminating months and months of work by a larger than ever group of committers and contributors. And while transaction support is the biggest new feature, it is certainly not the only one. We have features like exclusive producer support, about which I will be talking about more tomorrow in an ad hoc session. And, uh, and a new API for package management to improve the way we manage the functions and connectors code artifacts. Or finally, a simplified way to configure mem memory limiting Porsche clients. So these and many more changes in the Porsche 2.8. But after looking at the past, let's now look at uh, some of the items that we want to focus on in the very near future. 
problem that we have been uh, seeing overall in the data ecosystem is that this platform can be very difficult to tune and operate when running at, at a large scale. This is not a problem specific to Pulsar, but this is, it, it is a, something that we believe it should be addressed. Typically, there are a lot of configuration options, and each of them requires in-depth knowledge of the internals of the system. Worse, when integrated with multiple systems, like a compute framework, it might be very hard to predict how a change in the configuration will affect the overall stability and performance of the compose system. And finally, the workloads are increasingly dynamic and costly changing, so it is not possible to have a static configuration that will have an optimal performance in every condition. The first item I want to discuss is partitioning. So people are used to see partitioning and sharding, but these are really are artifacts of how systems are implemented. And partitions are usually not a natural property of the data. Because of that, we want to abstract the partition concept away from the user side. Application developers should not be worried about partitions. Operators should not be thinking about how many partitions are needed for a certain use case. Instead, the system should be able to figure it out on its own, internally splitting and merging partitions while maintaining the fundamental ordering guarantees. On the story side, tuning storage system can also be a very, very complex task. In particular, it can be very hard to predict the impact of configuration on the, on the overall performance while we are, we are crossing multiple layers. Like there is the operating system, the this device, this controller, and they all interact between each other. And in a similar way, the idea here is that we want to make it working with no configuration in a way that the storage system is able to automatically adjust the strategies based on the changing condition of the traffic and the hardware that is we are operating on. So all the aspects regarding the access pattern to the disk, what kind of cache eviction strategies, and so on, this should be all automated. And regarding ports of function, when we introduced ports of functions, we had the idea of making it a frictionless platform for developers to do data processing. So over the few years, the foundation of ports of function runtime has really matured into a solid platform, although the user experience is still not great. While it is very easy for developers to write functions, we should strive to make it much easier to actually deploy and manage functions. For example, having functions tooling to be well integrated with CICD platforms, supporting versioning and out-of-the-box support for A-B testings. Another aspect is observability and debuggability. The tooling and the platform need to make it super easy for users to discover issues in their own code or to detect performance issues. And finally, we are thinking of a more higher level DSL that can support higher level construct to further simplify writing data processing functions. And we talked before about tier storage and how it has enabled completely new use cases to be supported by Pulsar. Um, on regarding tier storage, the next step here is to make sure that, that we can integrate it with existing data lake technologies like Delta Lake or Apache Hudi. The vision here is to use the data lake as the tier storage backend so that the same data can be consumed as a stream or with the data lake tooling, having this duality between the long term and the, and the stream. As a final note, given the very nature of Pulsar that sits, that sits between different systems and platform and links all of them together, we, we want to reaffirm our commitment to work with the larger data community to ensure that Pulsar is supported everywhere, out of the box as a first class citizen. We have been partnering with many open source communities like Trino, Druid, Pino, Spark and Flink, and we will continue to, to do so and much more in the future. We believe that this will benefit Pulsar, its user, and the overall data ecosystem. Uh, thanks, Matteo. I have uh, walked through the history, how we kind of build a, uni uh, a kind of comprehensive uh, data system for unified messaging and streaming. And he also shared the insights on how, what is the future of Pulsar. 
and hopefully like with all the contributions coming from uh, different companies, uh, different individual de developers, we can make POSA become the, the uh, future of uh, messaging and streaming technologies. And thank you everyone. This is uh, the presentation from Mathieu and me today. Thank you.